In this section, we will try to come up with an algorithmic problem formulation for genome sequencing problem. And at the first glance, looks that this formulation is very simple. The problem is to reconstruct the genome from reads. Input is a collection of strings called reads, and output a string genome reconstructed from reads. Does it make sense? Actually, it makes absolutely no sense. And great mathematician George Cantor once said, to ask the right question is harder than to answer it. And the question, problem above doesn't make sense because we don't know what does it mean to reconstruct a genome. And it doesn't communicate what it means. Imagine that you enter it into a million dollar contract with a brilliant computer scientist named Alice to solve the genome sequencing problem. But the only way you can communicate with her is by passing her a single page with your problem formulation. If she understands what you want her to do, she will be your best, uh, you, she will be the best person to solve this problem. However, there are certain rules for communicating with Alice. Your problem may have multiple correct solutions, and Alice is free to report any of them. She would prefer to report an easy-to-find solution because she is busy and collect a million-dollar reward. And then, in this case, even if you have access to this brilliant computer scientist, you essentially wasted a uh, million dollars. It is important that your problem is formulated in such a way that any solution returned by Alice will uh, is answer the question that you are really interested in. Make sure that you can check that Alice's solution is correct. A well-formulated problem specifies how to determine whether the output is correct given the input. If it does not, how can you even check that a list solution makes sense? When you write this single page that you pass to Alice, avoid special terms outside computer science. Alice is not a biologist, and she is busy. She has no ability to ask you any question or to learn anything new about the genome. She only know, knows computer science. If you pass Alice a page with these terms like polymerase chain re reaction, she will fall asleep and your problem won't be solved. If you insist on using special terms in your input-output, you should first define them as purely mathematical terms. Your problem formulation should be precise, short, and elegant. If you can shorten your problem formulation, do it. The problem formulation should not get into the details of data representation. For example, instead of number n in the first line and n string in the second line, you can simply write uh, a set of strings. A few other hints for communicating with the list. No definitions in input and output. All definitions should be stated before input. If a certain variable shows up in the input, it should be relevant in the output. If you have a gun hanging on the wall, at some point it should fire. Problem formulation is independent of implementations. Even intractable problems can still be well formulated. And algorithmic problem formulation is not an algorithm. Do not provide an algorithm in your problem formulation. In the next section, we will try to figure out what it means to assemble a genome from error-free reads. But in real life, every read typically have errors, and we will thus consider one more problem of what does it mean to assemble a genome from error-prone reads. And I invited uh, bioinformatics graduate students from UCSD, Bahar Bekza and Nima Mashiri, to present various problem formulations.